and we are live right here. So, all go. right. So, uh, hey guys, thanks for uh, joining everybody. We are Hello. live with a special guest, a very special guest tonight. <laughs> right now, <out> California. <laughs> who knows who this guy is? <laughs> who knows who this guy is? Going to type his name down. We want to know, huh? So, yep. me, guys. Hi. So let me go ahead and uh, start. I'm going to share uh, this feed to a few groups to, uh, you know, just to just to get awareness going on. And uh, for the for six of you guys that's joined, give us a hi. Let us know where you guys are from. Um, we want to know if you guys even know this guy. If you do, <laughs> I can sing down. Say hi to me, guys. <laughs> Let me share two few groups here. Wrong use. I got. I'm using two computers here, so I have to make sure I'm typing on the right keyboard. So, how is it in California? Is it is it is it cold yet? Is is no, it's not cold yet. We still have to run the air condition sometime, but it's getting better now because the. Uh, the air quality is getting better. It's been really bad for the last four or five weeks because of the wildfire up in the mountains. Oh, okay. It brought all of the smoke into the area, in, in, into the city. So yeah. it's been very hard. Um, couldn't really do anything. You couldn't go out in the backyard. Uh -huh. You can't uh, go shopping. <laughs> we just yes. stuck in the house. We've been stuck in the house for the last six, seven months. <laughs> So how far how far are you from the from that fire? The closest one that I know is about a hundred miles away, but those are humongous, big, big fire. Huh? Uh -huh. the, it can bring the smoke into the area here, right? Where we are right here, we are really not in danger of anything, but, but uh -huh. the air quality, nah, uh -huh. it's really bad. So did you get any of the, the dust? Yeah. The air quality? You're going outside and you look, you look at the tree leaves. Now you, you see all this little dust laying on the leaf. Oh, okay. on the ground. You have to clean it up all the time. To, uh, it's been like that for the last, I think, maybe three, four weeks, five oh, weeks. Yeah. OK. All right. So then that is pretty bad because you're seeing dust there. Yeah, we couldn't go outside. I mean, I love to go outside and just stay in my backyard. And <laughs> that is a nice backyard. Did you spend, I think, when did you start fixing that backyard? Is it a year ago? No, no. We, 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 um, I built this house in 2003. Yeah. And then, um, right about 2011, I started to put the backyard together. Yeah. So it's like putting, building economy majors or a little part here, a little part there. And I think it's complete now, but uh, All right. I never know. yeah, I may think of something else and put it in the back too. <laughs> oh, oh, it looks really nice, you know? So um, I, yeah. I, I felt like I, I felt like I built, built it with you when you were building it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been living out there most of the time, and you know, yeah, yeah. When we first came here, my mom and my dad came with us, and they like this idea of big backyard, mm -hmm. and they stay outside all the time. And we couldn't understand why they wanted to stay outside all the time, but you know, as you're aging, you are uh, yeah. getting older. You have this tendency to enjoy staying outside too. So right now <laughs> you're staying outside most of the time. Yeah. No, I get it. Uh, but how big is it? Because you know we we see the pictures. I mean, how big is it? It looks pretty big. <laughs> California is, is one acre. So uh -oh. California is not like um, like in the Midwest. You can buy like two three hundred acres. Yeah. Over here is. If you can, you put a house in a one acre lot. Now it's it's very hard to do that because even just the acre alone yeah. could cost up to uh, in in my area right here. Yeah, just 
just buying the lot, not the house. The acre now is the, the price could range from hip one and cheap 125k to 225k, just the lot. Jeez. But so, but did you, did you, it's a whole backyard and a whole one acre? You, yeah, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a lot. Lot. that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I mean, we got a special guest tonight. Uh, who knows who this guy is? Go ahead and type it down. We got Christopher says he's the famous singer, is he? Uh, we got Luke says uh, the legend himself. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, hey, who do we have here? We have Sai. <laughs> hey, Sai. <laughs> I guess you know it's not his bedtime yet, so uh, I guess he's up. So uh, and John, hey John, uh, cheers. John says cheers. You know, so. Uh, let us know where you guys are at. You know, we'll give you guys a shout out. Uh, we got uh, anybody in California? Let's give us a shout out because uh, our guest is from California. So um, I think I'm done sharing. So uh, we can start. Uh, let's just see if anybody else wants to get. Anybody else want to give a shout out to uh, our special guest here? Give it a minute, and then I'll, let me get my notes out, and then we'll take it from here. But um, uh, how are you doing tonight, uh, Tuli? I'm doing I'm doing good. Actually, the last last few weeks I've been doing very good. Uh, yeah, I think as you're aging, yeah, at my age, uh, you started to have this minor little minor issue like malau. Mong people are more loud on you. I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm kind of like, I would probably say chronic pain. <laughs> you know, back in, back in our younger years, yeah, we, we were in that generation that used to play soccer like crazy. You know, you're out in the field playing soccer. Yeah. After you, all the way until the sun is down. And you do that almost every day. So when, as you're aging now, uh, those things are coming back to hunt you. And, you know. <laughs> You know, if the rain's gonna come, you know, everybody can tell you, right? Oh um, man, so, uh, so it's true, right? It's true, right? Because, it's true. Oh, it's okay. used to, because you know, as you age, if you do so cra those crazy stuff to your body back in the younger year, yeah, you'll pay for it. I just, uh, I don't know how football players survive, you know, living in the 50s and 60s. But, but you say you were, uh, you say. Football player or no, no, soccer, soccer player. Soccer player. Soccer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, so yeah, football and soccer is almost like you know you can call it. Yeah, so America, it's soccer. Well, yeah. Yeah. So all right, cool, cool. So all right, let's uh, let's start. We got a few people here. Sai says you're a garner. He's a garner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, stay hostile, my fam. Okay, and. And Dua says, hey, viewing support from Jamong. All right. So uh, let's start. So uh, welcome to everyone. Welcome to Hmong Hustler Show 31. Uh, I got a special guest today. Uh, some people know him as the legendary Hmong singer. You know, some people know him as the Hmong Warren Buff uh, Buffett, you know? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's, but uh, let's welcome my, my good friend, Tuli Baku, you know? Hey, thank you for uh, coming on the show with me. Um, okay. we'll talk a little about what you what you do. Um, so, thank you for coming. So, um, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, we, we love to hear about what what you've been doing, uh, especially the Moan Warren Buff, uh, Buffett thing. <laughs> but I want, but I would do it like some sort of like a like a disservice to my to my uh, my guests. That we were that we would that we didn't talk about your singing career. So can we talk a little about your singing career? Like like when did you start singing? Well, the singing things is actually was never a plan. I was never planned to be a singer as a kid growing up. Back in Laos in the uh, 1970s, no. I was living with my grandparents. They were always putting education ahead of everything else, you know. Uh -huh. In that generation, there, you go to school to become a uh, one. Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, yeah. 
like a leader or something. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go look at that one also. Education has always been a higher priority for me. Uh -huh. The singing part didn't really start it until you bow near long ago now when even you started to like girl. It was just more like a more like an activities to draw attention for for for, for from girl. And yeah. uh, me, I when we, we first started that was, that was the idea of chasing after girls, you know, doing that to get attention. But then <clears throat> After doing for a little while, from 1979 to about 1982, I met this professional musicians. No? He actually was playing for Kenny Roger. You guys know who Kenny Roger is, right? Yeah. He, he used to play the piano for Kenny Roger in Vegas. Huh? So I got to know this guy really good. So one time we were <clears throat> doing a show at church and he thought that um, maybe a good idea for me to go and do a monk song. So we okay. were working on monk songs and we went to church and it's a church party and they were you know, doing their own stuff. They were singing and uh, there was like a church, church dancing. Mm -hmm. And then when it was my turn to go up there and sing and I did the monk song. Huh? Nobody was, everybody was just froze. She wanted to dance. No, everybody was just looking at me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the show, the guys just suggested, why don't we record some song in Hmong and see what happened? So uh -huh. that's how I started getting into the uh, recording um, business. So, so when the, when they froze, was it like, they were like, wow, what is this, right? Or they're like... You, you, know, you remember the movie from... Um, Back to the Future, the one scenes when Michael J. Fox was playing that. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, I was just like that. <laughs> so, I, was, I was telling my, my, uh, my uh, you know, some people, Michael J. Fox copied that scene from me. <laughs> I remember that. I was up there singing and nobody was dancing. Everybody was just looking at you. Right? Yeah, but the audience was not. Was that Hmong, right? They were just like- Hmong, they're all, all Americans. Yeah, back, yeah. In, back in the 80s, we don't have a lot of Hmong people in, in, in Utah. Every, every you go, in a classroom, now you have, up, yeah. I would say that maybe 99% 90, of the students, they are Caucasians. Okay. In Kata, so yeah, you go, you, the church is all Mikasa. Oh, okay. So, so that's how you got started, was to impress the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, know, you just kind of wanted to do it to get the girls' attention, and then it's, it came. Okay, when we first started, we started selling it. Yeah, uh, it, like I said, now uh, for eight, eight, eight dollar, uh -huh. and it stuck there for almost ten years. And it wasn't. I started in nineteen eighty two. Okay, and then it wasn't until like nineteen ninety when we were able to commercialize it and oh. turn. Turned it into a money making too, and from from 1990 all the way to about 2026, about 15, 16 years. Yeah, you can do really well with 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 with, with music. Uh, me, I average about somewhere between thirty five thousand to seventy five thousand per year, just making money on this on the side. Wow. So <laughs> that's back so, in 1980. From, no, from 1990. 1990. Yeah. To about 2005, 2006. Just the sales from the. The sales from the CD. From the, the CD. CD and, and then the performance, the show. Okay. You can average. I don't know about other people because there isn't really a way to figure out how people do, but for me, yeah. you could have between. 35K to about 75K. The 1994 show that I did back in St. Paul, and that was the one that I, mean, I brought in about 75K <laughs> per year <laughs> for that particular year. So uh, so it, it was it, it was a good uh, income on the site. Yeah. That's called Kahulu. You know, it's a waste of helping to put food on the table. But most of the, the money were going to my mom and my dad because... 
yeah. and then they were also in the generation that uh, when they came here they they didn't get to go to school too. so yeah. they were most of the money that we made from there we just give it to them <laughs> okay all right so let me let me jump on here guys uh got a special guest today to uh he's here to talk about how he puts food on the table for his family <laughs> yeah. so, um, what, what he's doing what he's done in the past and then what he uh what he's doing now so um uh we just got done talking about you know how he got started on his singing careers uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, do you guys love this kind of stuff? Or if you want a shout out, uh, let us know where you guys are at, and we'll give you guys a shout out on the show. So, um, uh, so let's talk about. It. So, um, so you, what? Just curious. What makes more money, the the shows, or the the CD, or the cassettes uh, that that gets so? Well, for me, it's the CDs. Okay. The CDs. I I remember a year in Fresno, and uh, when we finished the whole day selling, and I took out my calculations to calculate how 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 much we make, and it came out to like we sold almost one CD every five seconds. Wow! Yeah, back in nineteen around nineteen ninety four ninety five. Yeah, uh, Lucy Hunt, and at that that particular area right there. A lot of people were buying CD and cassette. Yeah, and the show is more like a, just to promote your CD, and um, it was hard to make money um, putting on a show because it's so expensive to, to, to put a show together. Yeah, example like if you, in the nineties when we were doing a show in Saint Paul, uh, Artridge Arena, the rental and the security of there alone cost about eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars per night. And then you have the other ex traveling expense and everything else on top of that. So you're talking about maybe twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars. Just remember this is the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of high. Okay. Right? That's a lot of money so for that at that time. You either make it or you break it. You can make like, you know. 10, 20,000 on 10, 10 shows. And if you go into doing a sh couple of shows that nobody show up, yeah. it'll be fun. So it was, it was a high risk uh, uh, to, to do those big shows in the 90s. Uh, that's why by the end of the 90s, yeah, people are shifted back. In the 90s, we used to do this big setting show, just like like Amiga concert, American, regular American concert. Yeah. You have all these big buildings and you have special light and you get all these crazy things for a big show. It costs a lot of money to do that. But by the end of the 90s, the, the demand was not really there anymore. So that's why it shifted into these little buildings, you know, like club, party, you're going like what, what, what we're seeing today. It started in 2000 and just keep going down and going down. You still see a few people like, like Paradise and Mm -hmm. Destiny, they they still do this big show, yeah, once or twice it's every two three years. Yeah. But it is very hard to make money um, on those big yeah. shows because you can't really charge people yeah. higher than 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 thirty five dollars per, per tickets. And if you put on a big show like that, it will cost you more than the amount of money that you make. So most people who put on those big shows were just pretty much doing for to show to show your 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 fans, you know. Yeah. You just put it on for the fan. Wow. Okay. So just just moving forward, do you, where do you think it's going at now? As far as you know, you can't sell CDs. Nobody's buying CDs anymore. Just just for the, the up and coming artists. What do you where do you see that going? I I would think that the best. Well, if I'm still like in my 20s and my 30s and I started, I would concentrate on YouTube. Oh. So that would that would be the best to to uh, to make money out of music. But at my age right here, I just, I just don't want to spend that kind of time to do YouTube. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
But yeah. uh, Salem City, I, I, I've been observing Salem City since 2010, uh -huh. no, no, the last 10, 12 years. Yeah. It's been almost like nothing. I mean, technology just took it over. Uh, people can just want to listen to your song, they just go to YouTube. Uh -huh. well, it's just so easy to do that. So the demand for a CD is all gone. Most of people actually who produce a CD right now, they just want to do it to promote themselves. It's not. It's not yeah. a way a tool of making money anymore, and that's 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 not like in the nineties. In the nineties, we actually do it, yeah, for for money, you know, for income. So, yeah. I mean, I I feel bad. I wish I wish the market was would still be the same for these young younger yeah. singer. I see so many of them have so much potential now, uh -huh. but it's there just isn't really a way to bring back the city market like the way it used to be in the nineties. And, and you, you, you know, in St. Paul alone, in a couple, just two days in St. Paul, you can actually bring in like $35,000 if you actually come out with something really good. Huh? Mm -hmm. Those St. Paul, the difference between the Fresno, Tokamomua, City, Tiak, Senyana, Fresno, and, and, and St. Paul is that the Fresno New Year's, you, you, you got seven days, but the day, the day now, the time is really short because it's in the winter, right? Yeah. You can't tell your city until like 11 o'clock and then by about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. That's yeah. the end of it. In St. Paul, you can start selling like 9 o'clock and you go all the way until dark, sometimes in the, in the summer until like 6, 5, 6 o'clock. Oh. So you do you, you sell seven days in Fresno and just yeah. two days in, in St. Paul. Huh? If you have something really good, that, can make about the same amount of money. Seven days in Fresno, just uh -huh. two days in St. Paul. You will be able to make the same amount of money. So yeah. there you guys go. There's a big tip from Dooley. If you want to sell your CDs, go to St. Paul. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the market is very different now, though. I don't know what it's like anymore because I walked away 2000, about 2005. I started to feel like, this thing is still slowing down. Yeah. So I still wanted to do it by about 2007. Uh, I just told them that it's not worth it to do it anymore. So we, uh, we walked 2007. So I don't know what the market is like right now, by just observing yeah. and shining more. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not the same as the way it was back in the 90s. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, good. So uh, that's it. You guys have any questions? Uh, don't you guys join? We got a special guest today. Who knows who this guy is? If you do, type his name down. We want to see. Uh, let us know where you guys are at, uh, what city, what town. We'll give you guys a shout out on the show. Um, but we're here to talk about, you know, how he puts food on the table for his family. <laughs> so we just got done talking about his senior career, um, gave a few tips to uh, some of you young guys, uh, young girls out there. Um, reach out, uh, if you got any questions, you know, reach out to him. He's a, he's a great guy to uh, to chat and maybe a mentor. Uh, if, is that okay? I, I, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm already volunteering you. Is that okay if some of the young, young Artists, reach out to you for any tips? Yeah, sure, sure. I don't know if they like my style of music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. You got, we got your permission to like, message you. If there's, yeah, if, if, if the uh, the young artists here, they get, if they got any uh, questions, they can uh, message you. But I want to talk more about, um, about what you're doing now, right? So you, you know, you pivot, right? So are you, are you still there was a question up here saying that uh, will you ever do any music? And we'll we'll stop with that question on the on the on the on the music stuff. I I still do some new music music off, up, you know, off and on. Uh, it's just not I'm not into produce the whole album. It's like the way we used to do in the past. We just write a song, yeah, and then put it together, and then just put it on the internet. That's that's all I do. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not worth it to spend the time to to um, 
to produce even the whole album together anymore mm -hmm. because if, to do that is time consuming and for me to to do that you have to to be able to sell it and you yeah. can't sell it anymore then it just does not make any sense and for me to do it just for to make a name for myself yeah, i'm beyond that it doesn't make any sense to do that anymore too so yeah sometime once in a while i should doing things here and there with my daughters just for fun but and i still perform um in the past uh, since the 90s i guess uh, 20 30 years i travel a lot to perform live for for people and i charge a fee mainly to you know show respect you know <laughs> oh. so, but from from here on i'm gonna going back and do more charity work now oh, okay uh, instead of charging i'm gonna try to stay away from commercial uh performance i don't want to go in and do a show like uh, people have to pay for to get in and watch and do the stuff and i want to do more charity work like um raising fund for scholarship for young people um something yeah. for the community but not not nothing for politics though i don't like yeah, yeah. i don't, I don't <laughs> like the way like but like i just want to do and you know uh yeah, yeah. i just want to do things that are good for the community like a scholarship yeah. or women's groups or you know anybody that has some kind of thing that is willing to um raise some fun for for the community now that's what i wanted to do from from here on Wow. Okay. So you're just thinking about giving back. So that's great. That's, uh, that's good. So, uh, that's awesome. So, um, all right. So let's talk about what you are since, you know, you, since you are changing the way how you're singing now, let's, what are you doing now these days? Uh, we call you and people has calling you the Mon Warren, uh, Buffett, right? But you've been for a while. Today is the first time I saw that. I wasn't. <laughs> No, that's, that's way, way too much. I mean, I got me off here. <laughs> but, but in but reality, you know, I I know you, you and I have been talking, you've been trading stocks for a long time, right? Yeah, I started around 1993. Uh, yeah. I got all this knowledge back from college, going to college. I majored in computer science and um, came out of college with two two degree in uh, computer technology so moving out here in the in california in the 90s was right into the internet booming huh? so you got all these companies coming out like amazon yahoo ebay all these crazy companies are just coming out from left and right and i think for us people came, came out of, of college like me back in 87 i graduated in like graduated in 1987 so it was a perfect timing to see all of these things which is popping up and i was just lucky to be at the right place someone said that i was just lucky to be at the right place at the right time and that's that's true so i was just yeah at the right place at the right time to kind of invest into this young technology stock back in i started in 1993. Uh, so, so was there was there a teacher or was there a group of people that you I mean how how did you I mean when you say started how did you how did you jump into it? Because well, back back in college, my senior project was to work with this group of people. There's like six, seven of us, and we were to do this project for our final project to graduate. And we were working on something back in this. I don't know if this makes any sense to you guys. You know, back in those days, you you have your checkbook, right? You write your check. At the end of the month, you have to bounce your checks. So we were in the process of programming a program to help people bounce their check. Oh, okay. And then, and then it, we also add some other stuff to help people to control their their uh, like on. Uh, all, all of those expense and all these other stuff. So we okay. extend into portfolio too. So so we were playing this game back in in college, and I have really good uh, some good knowledge about investing from college. And uh -huh. then back in nine nineties when I first came out here in California, I started to um, 
do some research in, into investing because well one of the things that my my father-in-law told me was that making the money is the easy part keeping the money that you make <laughs> is a difficult part so yeah. that makes a lot of sense to me and then later on i thought well if since i'm going to keep the money that i make then i have to make the money that i make to work for me too right uh -huh. so the way to do that is through investing like right? either real estate like what you're doing uh this small business or something else so i thought about why not wall street let's play with it so i started going into um into investing right around 1993 yeah and started with this really small package about 25,000 k and then by nine the mid 90 that 25,000 k actually increased almost three four fold <laughs> because of the <laughs> internet because of cisco system okay <laughs> and then, yeah and then, then uh, it started to grow bigger and bigger with this internet company all the way up until 2000. I pretty much peaked 2000s. And then what happened at 2000 was the, the internet bubble burst, right? Yeah. And you have, have, remember what happened at 911 and that lead into two, the financial cra crash. So it took me almost like 12 years to get back to even from. 2000s. So let's let's stop there. So there's there's a lot of information there. So I, I just want to summarize to uh, people that just joined. Uh, our special guest is Dewey uh, tonight. Uh, he's talking about. You know, we talk a little about his singing career. If we talk now, we're talking about what he's what he's been doing uh, since uh, most of you guys might not know, but he's uh, he's he's been a big uh, stock investor, right? Different from a trader, stock investor. <laughs> yeah, I'm not investor. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not sure, no. He's an investor, stock investor. So he's he's a he's a what I guess what you guys call it, a position trader, where he he buys and holds the stocks for a really long time. So uh, I guess he started in 1993, uh, and he's been investing ever since. So um, let's hear more. Like, okay, so how? I mean, how did you pick? Like, what was what was your biggest? stock at that time you say cisco right cisco was that your biggest well, in the 90s yeah cisco cisco in the 90s you have to own cisco but cisco was the big, biggest performance in the 90s yeah yeah was it and then why or why what made you is it just hearing about it or what well because now, now i'm trying to dig into your psychology is why what's why do you pick certain stocks is how did how did you pick cisco well, let me just give you an example of how I did um, with all the, you know, with this different. So this is this is an idea of just an example of what I did. Uh, I don't want to go into Cisco specifically. Let's just talk about some of these these stocks right here. In 1994, before all of these internet company were coming out, I was reading. Uh, I was doing some research, and some guy from Stephen Robinson, huh? Mm -hmm. Back in those days, you used to have this investment banker that do the research and they'll send out to their client. And then I was reading mm -hmm. this whole list of stock. I think he gave about, I think that, I don't remember the exact number, but over, like, over 20, 30 stocks for you to kind of just look through it. And the way I, I'm just going to tell you how I decided to, and you know, pick the one that I picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So first one, he called it an ISP, not Internet Service Provider Company. Yeah. You got all these computers, you have to connect it to the, the Internet, right? Yeah. Back in those days, it was a brand new idea. So this company is coming out and he called it an ISP company. You're just going to provide people to connect the service for, for people to connect to the, the Internet. And they were charging like $19.99 per month or $29.99 per month, I don't remember. And I, it looks pretty good to me. So I thought I'm gonna go buy that one too. And then yeah. the next one, the next company that came on the list that attracted to me was an internet portal company. It's just like an internet portal where people just go in there and looking for information, right? If you wanted to look for news, you just go there 
and you can search for whatever news, search whatever you want to do. And then the next company that was on the list is the online books store. Yeah. You go online and you buy a book. Yeah. Amazon. So uh, kind of, I don't know, but I still like it. Yeah. And then and you have this other company that is supposed to come up with e-con, you know, operating system for, for to control all the cell phone. Okay. Cell phone is new, right? So you got Windows, <laughs> and yeah, you got yeah. the Mac, right? So this guy is supposed to come up with a new operating system for the cell phone. Yeah. Very attractive by you just reading the, the, the info information is there. Uh -huh. So I pick, I think I'm going to go with that one too. And then there was another company, he called it Internet Broker. No? Back yeah. in the day, you don't, you can't buy stock like the way we do now. Before, before the online trading stuff coming out, if you want to buy stock, you have to have a, a broker. You have to call him and tell him to buy it for you. Okay? Yeah. He'll buy it for you, and then he charge you a lot. So he said, this online broker is coming online. Well, you have you can skip all of this broker, and yeah. you can just purchase and you know your stock right on your own, and it's going to charge you a nineteen ninety nine per per trade. Yeah. So it looked attractive to me too. So I picked that one, and then the next one, the one this is the one I didn't pick. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't pick, and then it's, 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 it's more like a garage online. People just go and sell their trash. You just go there and you sell your trash. I didn't uh, really <laughs> like it, but I, I'm going to tell you the story about this one because I didn't like it because the, the way it describes it, it yeah, was yeah. not good to me, so I didn't buy it. And then another one that I bought was a, he called an online travel agent. Yeah? Or you can actually go in, name your own price, buy whatever you know, whatever, right? <laughs> so those are the ones that I picked coming out of, of uh, coming out of one, you know, minutes so of that year. I make a lot of money, so I got about 50,000. I'm gonna try to, in order for, I'm not gonna pick just one or two stocks, so I'm gonna divide it equally now, yeah, put 10,000 into each of the stock now. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you what happens. The ISP. But, but why? What made you pick those? Like, if I was, if I'm a stock, if I'm going to start investing, what made you pick those? Is it because yeah. it's more attractive, or do you? It's just you thinking that it's going to get better, or I mean, these are kind of like startup that you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I just went through the one that I picked. I read through everything that he he offered. Yeah. That some of the, the fundamental is not as attractive to me as the one that I read, just told you that I did, I bought. So I, after reading all of this information and you put all these things together and see what makes sense to you. I mean, I always try to, my idea of buying stock is buy something that I understand. Uh. Or buy something that I don't understand. Like for for example, this ISP start hooking the computer to the internet uh, is a very simple process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you should the company charge you about dollar per month, and they'll just connect your your phone line to, to the internet anytime that you want to. Which and one is that? What is that one called? Come America Online AOL. <laughs> I knew that one. Okay. Yeah, America Online, right? Did really okay. well for a long time. Yeah. It was purchased by uh, IG Time Warner. Huh? Yeah. That's yeah. So yeah. all of my yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next one is the internet portal that like you go in and get all this information. Yeah. Is Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. I kind of figured yeah. that was Yahoo. Oh, wow. Okay. So Yahoo, it became Yahoo, and Yahoo did really well. Okay. Before the before the boost now. Yeah. After the boost, uh, it just stuck there, not doing much. So I I sold that one completely out yeah. before, after two thousands two thousand one, and yeah. I shipped the fund into Google. And the online bookstore, you want to guess? <laughs> Amazon. Amazon. Which one makes me the most money? Is that Amazon? The one that makes you the most money is Amazon. What what made you think that that was going to be popular? 
because the guys the way he, he described Amazon is that he imagined that this company is going to be as big as the Amazon. The reason the name Amazon is because we, he, he predict, his prediction was that Amazon is going to become more like the Amazon jungle in, in, in Brazil. Yeah. yeah. The information that he provided there, selling books, is going to expand it to selling CD, and then it's going to expand it to selling other stuff. And this is going to be one of the biggest online you know uh online store ever so the information was right there right in front of you so i, I bought into that and it, it came later on became amazon so i bought like 400 share before all the spread up yeah just did you imagine this okay you bought 400 400 share on the equal dollar yeah okay the first spread you get eight hundred share, two for one. Yeah, Total yeah. Two for one, right? <laughs> Second spread, you got sixteen hundred, right? <laughs> and then the third spread, you got thirty-six hundred yeah. share. Thirty-six hundred share, and Amazon is now is now selling at thirty-two dollar. I mean, thirty-two hundred dollar per share. So, are you still so, holding? Are you still holding some of them? I own most. I still own most of the Amazon. I, I do through the years go trade some of the positions, yeah, off and on. But but the original share that I purchased are still there. So. Okay, so you more because that's all like information, like so psychology of picking other stock. So you you did you like for Amazon? Did you think that everything is going to move from paper to digital? Is that what you were thinking? Or no, it was no, it was. It, it, in the early days, it was not like that. It was just like an online bookstore. You just go oh. in there, you buy your book, and they just send it to you. You buy your CD, right? Yeah. And they send it to you. And but then. What, what made you attracted then, to that, though? Oh, what, was that? what is the question again? Yeah, what made you attracted to like that particular stuff? Well, because he was, you know, he's comparing it to Walmart. Back in those Walmart. Oh. You know, this thing is going to be bigger than Walmart one of one, one of yeah. these days. He gave a lot of information. He got, he went into detail of all of this information and just looked attractive enough to to buy. And every every company that you do, you have to kind of just summarize. And then, like I said, I buy. I just bought things that make sense to me. Yeah. That makes sense to me, right? You're just <laughs> selling something for money, right? Yeah. So that makes sense. Like AOL, mm -hmm. you you went in AOL. AOL. You get AOL. How did you think yeah. about Google? Google was, it did not come uh, public until uh, later in 2000s. So yeah. I, that is uh, in a completely how Yahoo is all dead now because yeah, I know that Google is going to be uh, replacing Yahoo. Oh, so, okay. And I shipped the fund from Yahoo into, into Google back in 2004, 2005, yeah. I think. Yeah. So let's move on to the next. Uh, and then this, comp this computer here is supposed to do an operating for our cell phone, right? Yeah. What happened was that the smartphone did not come until 2000, after 2010. Yeah. So every little phone company out there like Nokia, Eric Ericsson, um, Samsung, all have, they all have their own little uh, operating system. So this one, actually, I lost almost all of the money. They even our business. I mean, the description at the time was really good. Looked very promising. Not everything you pick is going to do well. <laughs> so so what this was is it? A, Which one was it? it? Infospace. It's called in, oh, Infospace. Info yes. OK, yeah. I remember yeah, that. Listen. So Infospace, yeah. it became Infospace for a while. And then after 2000, just went out of business completely. That was during the, the dot com boom. Like, yeah. Burst. It burst it out. Burst. It burst. Yeah, and that's it what came back. It never came back. And then the next one is the uh, online broker. Is the online broker actually became E Trade? That's what I'm using right now for trading. Uh, e Trade. Uh, e Trade. Oh, okay. And yeah. then the 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 the, the grass sales became eBay. That's the one that I didn't buy because just reading that, it's just like people selling their trash online. Yeah. 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 I didn't yeah. buy that one, but guess what? eBay was the only internet company that did not crash during the uh, oh, because everybody was trying, 
they use that to sell possibly their stuff. I wasn't sure what was the reason why they did not crash. But eBay, if you go back and look at it, eBay is the yeah. only stock that was holding. Amazon, all of these things crashed out this year. And the travel agents became Priceline.com. So that's that, how yeah. I started. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's how I started in 2000s. And not everything that, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, back in the 90s, but like I said, not everything you pick are going to work for you. Yeah. Sometimes you, Google, you wanna, I usually buy a stock with uh, good potential, like something that will be easy for me to follow, easy to understand. And I only sell it in the fundamental changes. Like for example, Cisco system, that nah? yeah. it did really well in the 90s. I hold it onto it as long as I could. Finally, I saw all of the share in 2015. Yeah. The same thing with Oracle system. I hold that for a long period of time because Oracle system was losing uh, yeah. to, to their competitors. They didn't shift into the cloud service fast enough. So those were the ones that I, I hold for almost 15 years before I sold it off. And I'm uh, more of the um, kind of like Kramer guy. You know, you, 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 never, you don't sell your vineyard, you sell your loser. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So tell me, tell me about that. Yeah. So you sell your loser. You sell well, something that is working for you, you, uh, you keep it as long as it's still producing for you. And yeah. as long as the fundamental is still there, then, then you are, uh, somebody say, uh, <laughs> Man, so, they're going to pressure me to uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, my wife is here. <laughs> so, uh, we can do Hmong, Hmong English, I guess, right? So let me summarize this. Uh, thank you guys for joining the uh, Lots of stuff we talked about. Uh, Dooley, uh, he's a special guest today. He's, um, we talked a little about his, his, you know, how he got started seeing, talk a little about, you know, what he, where he thinks the, the you know, you know, artist, I guess we get artists, singing artists is going as far as how to make income. And then now we're talking about how he, you know, he's pivoting. I think you, I, can, can I, did you retire already or uh, for yeah. a career? Yeah, I, I was doing something for the school district. I was in technology, teaching technology there for a long time. Then I decided so I don't want to go back anymore. So. so yeah, so now he's kind of pivoting. Now he's doing. I, I, are you focusing mostly on stocks now? That's the plan for now, but I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm not really that old yet. <laughs> so okay. so I mean, I know you wake up early in the morning sometimes. Because I can see you messaging and stuff like that. So you're probably up, like, because you're in the, you know, West Coast. So you're probably looking at stocks or something early in the morning. The market, you know. here in California, California, the market opened at 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> right? By 5, 5.30, I have to catch up with all of the financial news for the day. So I know exactly when the monthly job report is going to come out. Yeah. It's my uh, company's earnings are going to come out. I have to know all those. I have to catch up with all the news. So I'm usually up by about 5 o'clock. And then update myself with all of the financial news and politic news by about 5.30. That's why... I, you know, I got to debate with size at <laughs> 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, okay, we got a little, okay, so it's pretty much the way you pick your stocks is pretty much common sense. You know, yeah. you look at something that's coming up and coming. And let me, uh, let me give you another example of what, why I buy things that makes sense, that makes sense to me. Because I, I don't want to jump into something that, uh, Looks really good, look, looks really fancy. Everybody's chasing after it, but then I don't understand anything about it. An example is like Bitcoin coin a little while ago. I didn't know anything about that stuff. So yeah. I don't want to stay away from that. But look at something like Apple, okay? Let's take 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 example of Apple. In about 2010, 2012, if you're in the airplane and people are carrying their smartphone, People usually take out their phone, cell phone before the airplane take off. 
of in the land, right? Yeah. And you look around like 10 people around you and you observe and maybe six or seven of those people are carrying an iPhone, right? So it makes sense to buy Apple, <laughs> keep Apple, right? Yeah. That's the way how I feel like. An example for right now, if you were to go to the Bay Area from here, from the bottom of the Bay Area about mm -hmm. one hour, 30 minutes, you're on the freeway the next time if you live in California, mm -hmm. the next time you're on the freeway, observe it. You're going to see Tesla huh? on the road. Yeah. More than the BMW <laughs> or the Mercedes Benz. You start seeing that now. So just think about it. In 10 years from now, Tesla. So let's do this. So I, what, you know, let's do this. What are you looking at now? Because we can talk about the past. That's the past. What stocks are you looking at now? Okay. Well, <laughs> let me look. I, I got, I got, I got just do one. Just do one. We'll get, they can message you. Just what? Which one are you looking at now? That it's in your head right now. That you're like you're thinking gonna go far. Well, you know, uh, as as you're an investor, now, Yeah. I don't really have any particular one that I'm looking at right now, but uh, as an investor and as you're aging, you're getting older. You need yeah. to also balance call risk too. So in the last five, six years or so, I started to reduce my risk down. And what I did is that I put about 40, 50% of my money into just this ETF, ETF fund. Huh? Okay. You know what the ETF fund, uh, those, those are like, uh, it's trading like mutual, a basket of stock together. Yeah. And, um, it's, it trade more like a, it's more like a mutual fund, but you can trade during the day. You can buy it, sell it during the day. It's not like mutual fund. You have to buy after the market close and sell it after the market close. Yeah. So I put like 40, 50 percent of my money into that, and then I just use the other to 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 keep my stock really simple. If you you know the information that I what, send you what, in, in the so ninety what, what industry are are you focused on 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 the ETF? Is it energy okay. ETF? I, I, you can do this. You need to have that Russell 2000 because the reason I, I don't own a lot of the rest of the Russell 2000. The reason I do it because in order for the market to and you know rally and actually be meaningful, the uh -huh. Russell 2000 has to come up too. I'm giving, gonna give you an example just a little bit in September. And up, yeah, the market was just heading up like crazy, right. Like, it was just like a few stocks that actually brought the Nasdaq up, right? You got like Apple, Google, Amazon, a few other stocks. Yeah. And the rest of 2000 was just down here. It's not coming up. So you know that it's going to fall back. Uh, so like, okay. fall back, right? Reason I own a small amount of the rest of 2000 is just, just to keep that. that you see, in the last last week, now when the market was rallying, and you see that Russell 2000 was coming up with the market. So I, I know that for me, you know, I yeah. think this rally is going to stick, right? Unless something yeah. happens in the election. So, 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 uh, <laughs> this rally looks pretty good to me than the one that happens in late August and early September. So I but feel let's talk about the so ETF is, I mean, ETF, I think ETF is in certain industries, right? Well, ETF, they have, if you go to BlackRock, just search uh -huh. from BlackRock, iShare. Yeah. They have so many different, different industries. But which too. one are you focusing on? Which, which with ETF? The, with the, the uh, technology. Uh -huh. um, oh, technology. So you focus on an ETF for technology, right? Yeah. Well, no, that's. Let me go. Oh, hang on. <laughs> that's like a bring up. Yeah. So. Uh, guys, you know, those of you guys joining, a uh, special guest today, uh, let us know where you guys are at. We'd love to know where you guys are at. Uh, this special guest, if you know who he is, type his name up. We want to know if you guys know who he is, but he's from California. Just if you guys didn't know, uh, any California people, give us a shout out. We'll give you a shout out. Uh, let us know. Well, yeah, I do ETF Japan too. Okay. Well, I, I think I was telling you on Facebook that I, I'm going to pick up some ETF Japan. Um, because if to invest overseas now, yeah. I don't know enough about in the individual company in Japan or in China. So instead of go into individual stock now, 
I just do the ETF Japan, the okay. ETF Japan, the ETF, ETF China. And the one that I'm looking at right now that I really kind of want to get some is ETF Vietnam. <laughs> I think I think Vietnam is going to be a, a kind of high risk, but I think it could be a big growth in the next. And okay, so that's the one you're looking at, that ETF in Vietnam, right? Yeah. Is, is that? I mean, is it because? I mean, I'm looking at. I mean, for me, is it because? Because we're moving away from China, maybe, and well, all the I, other. I think the location of Vietnam. Vietnam, the location is really good. Is the country's location there? Yeah. And we, the Vietnamese also have really, really good you know, high potential. You're looking at all these Vietnamese business here in America, no? and I know some of these Vietnamese I, people. Too, they are sending the money back to invest with the country. They're not like us. They, yeah. they for us Hmong people, no? we this is our country right now. They're not this is our country, right? We just here, we yeah. invest here, we live here, right? Many of the Vietnamese people, the, the successful people, now, they invest back in the country. So I think, you know, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. This is just guessing, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is his personal opinion. He's not giving out stock. To this is <laughs> not like investment advice and anybody, I guess. I'm just my guess that in the yeah. next 10, 10 years, I think Japan, Vietnam is going to do well. Well, we got people thinking that Vietnam is the is the baby China here. So, uh, right, I guess you agree with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a few people that mentioned about Tesla. What do you think about Tesla? Because you know, well, Tesla, Tesla is a very very expensive stock right now. You're talking about price earning ratio at about nineteen hundred. That's really really expensive. But think about this, okay? That you know that most of most of the models going somewhere between three hundred fifteen to four hundred something mile per uh, per charge. Yeah. Yeah. Just think if the the, the battery technologies give people a thousand mile every time they charge. I think a lot of people is going to run the wide down. Uh, yeah. yeah. For real. <laughs> yeah. So you. So you like it, right? I like it. I mean, I mean, just like, <laughs> I like that. Like the, I think, I think Elon, Elon Musk. Yeah, they also have really good on Elon CEO too. I like Elon Musk. Okay. And I think, I think he's concentrated a lot of into the tech, uh, battery technology. You now, uh -huh. one thing improved like a thousand mile per charge. Yeah, think, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, just think. About if they can bring the, those model down price down to like the twenty five thousand dollar range, yeah, uh -huh. it may be replaced Toyota and Honda. <laughs> there you go. So I mean, uh, just gave you some stock tips, guys. He just gave you some stock tips. But just remember, guys, <laughs> I am not a licensed <laughs> investment advisor, so I'm yeah. not talking for educational purpose only. So okay. You know, you always do your homework before you put your money. Into okay. Stock. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so I think Sai here he agrees with you. Sai goes, "Hey, Vietnam is ten years behind China. So if you miss the China band bandwagon, Vietnam is going to be big." So Sai also agrees with you. That's that's pretty cool. Um, uh, what about do you do you know anything about the the silver market, like gold and silver? I don't trade that. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I, I don't do commodity. And I don't do. I don't trade gold and silver. I don't do yeah. that stuff. Okay. I'm yeah. not a trader. I, could you, I, I only buy things that I understand. And I have this. If if I know that I am not going to hold a stock for at least five years, ten years, then I usually don't buy it. Of course, you're always going to have uh, some trading positions to 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 hedge. Yeah, against your loss, like what happens in 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 uh, March, you gotta have some cash on the side to, to you know mm -hmm. get buy some trading positions to to uh, you know balance out to to protect uh, your yeah. loss, and that's how I do it. Awesome. Um, so I mean, just I mean, I know we're coming up close to the end of the hour or the show, but 
like, where do you see, I mean, since this is election year, you know, and November's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people talking about, like, if, if Trump wins, the market is still going to go up. If Biden wins, the market's going to go down. What do you think about that? Is, is that? Well, before I say anything about that, I just want to know that I'm not a politician. So whatever yeah. I say is just my opinions, and I'm not trying to get, I yeah. am not trying to convince anybody to vote <laughs> one way or the other. Right, right. But vote. your predictions. Like based on that, your philosophy, right? Yeah. I then with that being said, I think with what has been presented in front of us, a four trillion dollar tax hike is not gonna be good for the market. It's gonna be hard to earn um, to make money in the market. Yeah. Like Kramer said that there's always gonna be a bull market somewhere. Yeah. Even if Biden gets into the White House, there are still, still going to be pockets of stock that you can make money out of it. It's just going to be much harder to do it. With the Trump administration, just think about the last uh, last four years. Yeah, I don't know how other people did it. 2017, to the 2017s, I did about 45%. 2018, I did about 5%. Last year, I did 39%. And as of year to date now i did 39 percent again so so you don't get that kind of um returned it's not something that easy to, to get it <laughs> put it that way with trump it's just much easier to to and you know to make money out of the market yeah, but yeah. Again, you can still make money even if biden's you know, yeah when you look <laughs> you're playing the safe way you're playing the safe way. You're playing the yeah. safe answer right here. But but I tell I you, one one of the things that need people people need to be careful is that they to think. Remember back to the, the 2000 elections, now. Yeah. When Al Gore and Bush will have that issue, the market was just drifted slowly, lower and lower and lower. That's the type of market that I don't like. When it just keep going down low, I like it when it just if so down go like straight down like in in March. Yeah, but it was just drifted, drifted, drifted. It's very hard to hedge against it. So, so um, when Al Gore and Bush will have that issue, the market was just drifted, drifted, drifted. And right now, it's time to be cautious. I'm telling you what I'm doing. I don't know if everybody has their yeah. own strategy. Okay, yeah. what I'm doing right now is before the elections, is take advantage of this rally and raise some cash. So in my portfolio, I'm like 70% into stocks, 30% in cash. And usually in 30% in cash, I mean, I'm being very, very careful and extra cautious. Oh, okay. so you know what's gonna happen. So if, if for some reasons, didn't think didn't go well and then the market didn't like it it's selling down then i have some cash on the sidelines to buy back yeah so um, that's what i'm doing so uh, i mean other people may have their own some people use options to do that you know, yeah. i don't know I, I like to make things easy for me so yeah that's so what just, i'm doing right now so okay so we we got your plan just 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 to just to say hey when the market dropped back when COVID hit, what did you do? I bought my I bought Microsoft and I bought the uh, Apple. <laughs> you saw me up here put it online. Yes. So why? So we want to know why. So we want okay. to tell you why. Why? Yeah. Over the years, over the years, I follow Kramer really close. Hey, hey, Kramer, Kramer, is Kramer, Kramer, Kramer. Right? You you can't trade like Kramer. You have to, you you just need to understand the guy. And then you adapt it to your own philosophy and you come out with your own strategy. Um, Kramer said this years ago, when the market crashed like that, you always buy your winner, don't buy your loser. <laughs> okay. Whatever, what, whenever the market, if you buy your winner, eh, when the market turn around, those stocks will be the one that's heading up first. So that's why I bought. Microsoft and I bought it up or I haven't put it online. I put it on Facebook. 
started. I was like seven days early, but seven days early was much better than uh, not getting in it. Okay. Uh, and then I, the, the Japan, the, the F, ETF Japan is the one that I bought right on the bottom. But, okay. but, but uh, Apple and Microsoft was like about a few days early. So, but it still pay off really well. So, so, but the logic behind Microsoft, right? So you're, you're thinking it's still going to be successful uh, and it's a strong stock, right? And what was the other one? The Apple. Apple. Yeah, Apple. You think Apple is still going to be strong uh, in this market? Well, the, lead, the leaders of the the technology says, you know, whatever the leaders, whatever sectors will always be the first one to, to bounce back. Okay. Oh, okay. gotcha. You, gotcha. If you look into the bank, you, you pick the leaders in the bank sector and the leaders will always be the one to bounce back first. So that, that was the reasons behind why I bought Apple and oh. Apple. Okay. because they were the, and I, I tried to buy Amazon too, but I did not come down to the price that I want. I set a, I set a, uh, what do you call those? A, a limit. That your, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it didn't come. trigger. You didn't trigger your your price. Yeah, it didn't trigger. I didn't trigger. Yeah. So I don't think that Microsoft and and are uh, you? The, but are those you are a, positions, and you usually sell them and trade it up. Gotcha. Are you are you a technical trader? So just so some of the guys, do you know? No, I I don't do that stuff. Like I said, I like to buy things that I understand, and I like to buy things that I want to hold it for a long time. Yeah. Um, most of the technical traders they hold the stock for a couple of hours, a couple of days, weeks. Yeah. And so, uh, it's just if if I'm with, young in my 20 or 30 i may try to do some of the stuff i did try that in the 90s but i didn't like it is too much for me okay for, for some people it may be okay for me it was too much of a high risk yeah um, so how do you pick your numbers how do you how you know that is that this particular number i want to jump in when it's ready uh i don't understand are we you mean the price yeah yeah so so well, if you want to get Amazon, how do you, how do you know what number you're trying to? You're gone, you're gone. This is what I do. You, um, if I see a stock that I like and I want to build a positions on that particular stock, I use usually divide it into three purchases. I buy about a third of what I want to buy of that, that stock, and then maybe a, a week, two weeks later, three weeks later, a month, I buy the other. And then I bought, that's how I build. It usually takes me about two, three months to build a position in a stock. Kind of just diversify because you saw, pick at the bottom, so I'll pick uh -huh. it up. Yeah. So oh, okay. everything out. That's how I do it. Okay. So there's this kind of like a gut feeling. Yeah, it's not like 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 the uh, trading position, trading, trade, when you do, you're buying a trading stock, I always tell tell people that even VIX, if you follow the VIX, you guys know what I'm talking about, VIX, VIX. Yeah. If that buy, that thing hit 70, you, know, you close your eye, you buy anything on the, on the market and you, <laughs> you make money. And that only happened like four times. Yeah. March, last year, uh, March of this year, the 2000, 2008 and 2009 financial crisis. Yeah. VIX also hit minus seventies, and then the uh, nine eleven, right after the nine eleven attack. Yeah, that's when it hit. Yep. So I, I I caught that one. I caught the financial crash in, and I caught the one in March, but I missed the Black Monday in nineteen eighty seven. That's too young. Nine eleven. No, they, they call it Black Monday. Back like in Monday. when the Dow so almost off like twenty something percent, I was not in the market back then. So that a tip I, right there, that's a great tip. So if the VIX, so if we see another market crash, you're still paying attention to that VIX, which is stands for like a volatility, right? Volatility yeah. of stocks, um, and it's just like a price action. 
And so if it hits somebody again, that's kind of your trigger to go. You probably all didn't go die by anything. And it was but, then, but I think what you're going to do is still focus on the stronger, the stronger the stock, right? Yeah, that's and, what I thought. Yeah. So that can be a perfect next tip, guys. If you guys want, you know, I mean, we're not giving you any suggestions. <laughs> 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 but you know you done successful with it right so uh so you jumped in a couple times when the vix hit somebody and by strong stocks and then i'm assuming you're successful in it so that can be another tip so uh uh i like it i might do it uh hopefully we don't get another crash but if we do uh, i'm gonna pay attention every, to it. Every, every, i think every 10 20 20 years, you may get once, <laughs> get it once. <laughs> well, I think you said it already hit a couple of times too, so. Yeah, we only uh, hit like four times in the event here uh -huh. so, since. Yeah, so there we go. So uh, any questions? Uh, Victor, somebody, bye, bye, bye. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> thanks you guys for participating. Uh, man, we got so much stuff here. We got a little over my, my show here, but. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> we talked a lot. I took a lot of notes here. Um, yeah. We talked about how Dooley makes money, how he keeps his money, <laughs> yeah. and how he multiplies. He's, he, how he's yeah. multiplying his money right now with the stock market right now. So uh, any predictions on what's going to happen with the stock market? <laughs> you know, election, election are unpredictable. I, yeah. I, I always learn how to be cautious during the during the election yeah. season. Yeah. For example, you know, in 2000, now the economy was doing really well. The stock market, even though the, the, the internet bubble burst, everything else was still doing good. And I didn't expect the Elgo to lose that election at all. And then it happens. I got lost the elections and then all of the Money was shifted from technology into um, into the energy sectors, and a lot of people got hurt. So, so predicting the election is kind of scary. So, just it's, this is just the time to be a little cautious, be careful. After the election, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to get yeah. back in the market. So, just yeah. take it easy, relax, and don't get too stressed out with it. Okay, great. So. Uh... Let's go to the uh, the last section of my interview here, where we ask all our guests. You know, uh, this last question is: If you had a billion dollars, what's the first two things you would do with it? A billion dollars. Yeah. Billion dollars. I think I'm gonna buy a fishing yard and go fish with Sai in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> a fishing yacht. Yeah, I, think we just, yeah. I think we just borrow a side. I mean, we just jump on size yacht and we we'll open fishing together and spend the day debating. I like debating with the guys because he, he does not get mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those of you know who don't know who's talking about, it's Saito, one of uh, one of our you know million millionaires, you know, out there. So um what's the second thing you would do? I I would think that I at my age I would do a lot of you know, charity work, um, giving back to societies. Yeah. And in the last, especially for me, now I think the last thirty years or so, I think the communities, the Hmong communities, now has been very supportive of my music. Wherever I go, it's very hard to to, to find into Hmong performance, into musicians now survive as long as I did too. And um, the Hmong people has been very, very good to me. And if I have the opportunities to give it back, I would give it back to the community as much as I can. And that's part of my plan for the next 10 years or so. I would like to do more charity works and raising funds for communities and- Yeah helping the community actually helping the young i like to do you know i'm still in the process of thinking about something that will encourage the Hmong boy né? you notice that the Hmong boys don't go to college as much as, anymore 
very few Hmong, the, the female are still going to, to college, right? Oh, okay, yeah. A lot of the Hmong boys, as soon as they finished high school, they wanted to do something else. So yeah. I got thinking about maybe one of these days, you know, come up with some things to kind of help to, to uh, help encourage these Hmong, young Hmong boys to go to college. Oh, I think college, college is where you can dream about big things. Yeah. And a lot of things, it, including me, you know, all these dreams were dreamed back in on campus. Yeah. You know, when you, you finish a computer program, uh, homework at two o'clock in the morning, that's when all these things come, to, all these big dreams come into your head. Yeah. All right. Well, let me know if I can help you out. I will be willing to help you out with that. Uh, <clears throat> Love to help you. That's that's a great thing to push out, you know. Whether that's you know the boys or the girls, I would love to help out. Um, yeah. But you're right. If if you're seeing that the you know us mom boys aren't, we need to be uh, smacking them. Well, yeah, you're looking at the scholarship applications for 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 young Hmong students going to college. Yeah, and you see almost like a ratio of maybe seven, um, seven to one or six to one females wow you know, or uh, other males so something's wrong with our boy we need to get our boys to go back to school again <laughs> what do you think that's what do you think is the issue before we let you go i'm not really sure what is the issue is i think society just kind of turned things around that um back in my era okay mom and my dad people that i know always believe that the best way to get out of poverty is to go to school, right? You gotta go to school yeah. to get food on the table. And and we always plant, they always planted in our head that you have to go to college, right? I think within the last 20, 25 years or so, the, the culture has changed a lot, making college a lower priority for many families. So maybe people don't look at college education as, important as the way it used to be anymore. When you're looking at the Chinese culture, the Chinese community, their kids going to coming to school here, they pay almost like 150K per year to go to UC Stanford or UC Davis here. But they're willing to put the money there to send their kids to go to school here. And many of our kids here actually qualify to go to UC Davis for you know, almost tuition free and yeah. some people not trying anymore so i think we need to <laughs> somehow somehow get together as a society and see if we can pursue it out young boy i can i still see a lot of young girl among young girls going to college yeah but but it seems like the numbers of the boys going to college are reducing maybe there's better opportunities out there people make don't have yeah. to go to college to make good living anymore maybe there's something else maybe i don't know what it is but I think college, I think education is very important for, for Belu society, né? for the Hmong society. So I hope that I can do something to help to put the boys back into college again. Gotcha. All right. So let's work on it. Um, yeah, let's, let me know if, if there's any way I can help you out with that. So um, Good. thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, those of you guys who join us and ask questions and participate participate appreciate you guys uh thanks uh duly again for uh coming on the show and giving us your tips and stuff like that uh we appreciate it and uh guys let me know if you guys like the show hit some likes let's get some likes on this on the special guest duly baku here so um that's it uh duly hey. appreciate this all right thank you all right Thanks, guys. guys uh all right guys Good night, and guys, uh, like, like I say all the time, keep hustling, all right? So, all right, uh, have a good night, guys.